Good morning uh, to everybody. Uh, let me start by uh, welcoming you all to this uh, third uh, WTO 8 for Trade Global Review. Uh, once again, uh, you've been many to accept this uh, invitation, and I take uh, your presence as a reaffirmation of uh, our collective uh, continued political commitment towards achieving the objectives we uh, set out in 2005 when we launched this uh, Aid for Trade initiative. Many a speech on development uh, will start with a quote, often uh, attributed to an ancient uh, Eastern uh, sage about uh, how uh, progress is the journey of a southern small steps or that uh, success is a journey, not a destination. Now, let me begin with a quote of a more modern South, uh, not uh, handwritten by a calligrapher and inscribed on silk. No, uh, a quote that came off an office printer at the UN last year. And its uh, prosaic origin uh, belies its uh, remarkable content. Quote, over 25 years period, the poverty rate in uh, East Asia fell from uh, nearly 60% to under 20%. And I think the printer is a good metaphor for why we are on track uh, to meet the uh, MDG goal of uh, having the proportion of people uh, living on less than one dollar a day by 2015. Now, this UN office in which the printer resides is the uh, end point in a chain uh, that includes uh, many hundreds of suppliers working in uh, thousands of different uh, locations worldwide. It is a sort of a testament to an ever more sophisticated uh, trade in tasks and uh, encapsulates the impressive story of uh, technological innovation. Uh, technology's appeal is to render the intricate and uh, challenging seemingly mundane. Made in the world products such as printers and the technological innovation which underpin them are one of the reasons of this progress in uh, poverty reduction and not just in uh, Asia. Global supply, global value chains are extended ever more widely in uh, countries in Asia, in Latin America, in uh, Africa. And it is in the same 25 period referred to in this uh, UN quote that this process has taken off. Uh, to use a web analogy, uh, it's gone viral. In the mid-1980s, uh, uh, American, European, Japanese companies invested in a vehicle assembly in China. In uh, 2010, Chinese companies uh, opened uh, vehicle assembly plants in uh, Cameroon and Zambia. And it's not only China and not just manufacturing. The same trends are evident in uh, Kenyan investment in the East African community, Brazilian investment in uh, Central America and in Africa. Nor is it just manufacturing. Uh, services are also becoming uh, spatially diffuse. Now, this transformative power of global markets is the intellectual underpinning of aid for trade. And it's also the reason why, uh, among a few others, I'm still committed to finding a positive outcome to the Doha development agenda, to ensuring that the multilateral trade rules provide the legal certainty that companies need to go about their business beyond uh, their borders. 
as we saw with our collective response to the global recession, uh, these rules are our best insurance against the uh, economically impoverishing influence of uh, protectionism. Now, rules do not respect themselves, of course. The same mutual trust that uh, underpins this uh, complex printer chain is also the foundation of the multilateral trading system and its rules. These rules were severely tested during the crisis, but our collective response to this crisis uh, underpins our belief in the power of what we collectively can achieve. And it's also why I believe uh, Aid for Trade is uh, integral to our efforts to ensure that the benefits of the multilateral trading system are shared as widely as possible. Rules are not sufficient in and of themselves to overcome the constraints which uh, developing countries, and in particular least developed countries, have in uh, accessing these process. And that's why uh, you mandated uh, us in Hong Kong in December 05 to mobilize additional, predictable, sustainable, effective financing for aid for trade to help overcome supply side and trade related infrastructure constraints. So how does the balance sheet look uh, nearly six years on from Hong Kong? That's the focus of uh, the next two days. And let me briefly outline where I believe we can show results and also explain where I believe we can do better. Now, what results can we report? The headline number is a 60% increase in real terms uh, since 05 in the aid for trade resources mobilized. And positive signs that uh, funding is uh, holding up despite the lingering impact of the recession on public finances. And this increase has not been at the expense of other categories of aid. And more is now going to the poorest than uh, when we started in 05. There are positive signs that uh, progress is being made in uh, bringing more coherence to national and regional development policy by integrating trade objectives into policy frameworks and vice versa. And donors are getting better at supporting these priorities, both in terms of uh, offering support and uh, in the way they coordinate their support. Now, these are creditable achievements, but they are not impacts. We must show what these accomplishments have achieved on the ground. What we can show is uh, based on the joint monitoring exercise that uh, Angel and Al launched last year and which uh, you will see uh, described in this uh, 2011 edition of the uh, Aid for Trade at a Glance uh, publication. Now let me outline where I think we can show results and let others uh, fill the details of the balance sheet. A rich and varied picture of the results of Aid for Trade implementation activities on the ground. This uh, covers projects, programs from countries as uh, geographically and uh, alphabetically distant as uh, Azerbaijan and uh, Zimbabwe and most countries in between. Results range from increased export volumes to more employment to faster customs clearance to better impact on poverty reduction. Noteworthy is the positive impact on women identified in the uh, results uh, which uh, we have reviewed. There is also an understanding of how Aid for Trade can work in support of trade opening and economic reform with positive, direct impacts on economic growth and poverty alleviation. 
Support from the donor community has helped embed the trade opening and economic reforms agendas, as uh, outlined by uh, countries as uh, diverse as uh, Cape Verde, uh, Costa Rica, and uh, Vietnam. And it also shows an emerging body of uh, research uh, which draws a clear, a positive link between uh, aid for trade and uh, improved uh, trade performance. Now, any balance sheet, uh, of course, includes a debit account. So let me uh, outline where I think aid for trade still uh, must uh, make progress. First, uh, we need to make headway uh, in bringing management for development results to aid for trade. Get more serious about result-based management on the donor side for obvious uh, accountability reasons, but more importantly, on the side of partners, they need to possess uh, the tools to assess the impact of their actions. Second, uh, we must move ahead on aid effectiveness in aid for trade, factors such as uh, alignment, ownership, and uh, others of the Paris principles emerge clearly as uh, factors of a success, but project management issues, inadequate funding, sustainability, and problems in uh, partner countries are too frequently uh, cited as uh, shortcomings. And third, uh, we must uh, do a better job in uh, bolstering uh, private sector engagement in the aid for trade agenda. In my view, this is uh, critical to sustaining aid for trade interventions beyond the end of publicly supported projects. In a way, uh, aid for trade uh, should uh, morph into investment for trade. Now, I've stressed the need to show results uh, ever since the first uh, global aid for trade review in uh, 07. And the reason for that is simple. If we are to sustain political interest and financial resources at times of uh, inevitably growing budgetary constraints in uh, many traditional donors, we must show results. And as I move towards my closing, let me uh, return to those uh, latter-day sages and their thriving uh, printer business. The global trading system has given them the opportunity to test their business acumen, but to focus on their business alone is to uh, lose sight of the value of the chain to which uh, they are connected. Can we uh, attribute the progress in uh, East Asian poverty alleviation to the one printing company? Obviously not. If we look at the whole value chain, can we start to see causality? We might start uh, to see clues. And so with that for trade. Uh, painting on this uh, giant canvas, aid for trade is uh, but one of the many colors uh, in our uh, palette. And the initiative we launched in 05 has made it a deeper, more vibrant one, no doubt, but it is one part of a bigger whole. So we must be rigorous in our approach to monitoring and evaluation so that we